BCE 4260 will have our last lecture, I think for the semester. And um, before I did that, I wanted to show you how VidGrid works. And so um, what I'm actually doing is I just have PowerPoint open like this and I just go, go through my slides like this. And uh, there's, a, there's a box on my window and whatever's in that box is being recorded. And so what I do, so that all you do is see the slide, is I actually take my uh, um, PowerPoint and I make it big. And then um, uh, <clears throat> you just see uh, that, okay? So uh, now I got to perfectly zoom it so it fills up the recording box which I've messed up. So uh, there we go. Okay, perfect. Okay, anyway, that's how uh, VidGrid works. Okay, uh, we're doing short column design now. And previously we talked about interaction diagrams. They're a plot of all combinations of P and M that cause a column to fail. And I've made a spreadsheet that does that. I've posted that. There are also interaction diagrams in your book, or I have several books. And so what I've done is I've scanned a bunch of them, and I've also posted them for you to use. And uh, here are some. These are uh, rectangular uh, columns with steel on two faces. I think I scanned these out of Dr. Dolan's book. And we'll talk about what, what's different about them. But the key thing is that uh, um, if you look at the, the picture, you can see the steel is on two faces. Um, you know what? I'm going to pause this and uh, mirror my iPad on here so I can control this. Just a minute. Okay, I'm back. So what I've done is this is a screen on my laptop and I'm able to mirror that onto my iPad where I can use my pen. And so what I was trying to point out is this. You see that picture there and see how the steel is only on two faces. there and there. Um, that's the kind of column that is. In contrast to this, here are uh, other interaction diagrams uh, that are uh, in the uh, book. Um, let me get my face out of the way. Uh, so down here um, is a round one. And down here is a square one. But in this case, uh, the steel is on all four sides, like this. Oops. So you see there that uh, the steel is on all four sides as compared to these pictures where the steel is on just two sides. And so the percentage of steel, um, you know, is divided among four sides and just among two sides. And of course, if you have a round one, you would use the round picture. Anyway, I've scanned a bunch of these and, and I've posted them for you, for you to use. Now let's talk about how to use them. We went over this example previously, but let's go over it again. So in this example, we're just trying to figure out uh, P and M. For a given eccentricity. Uh, this isn't the typical way you would use these graphs, but uh, it's a good way to check your final designs. Okay, and so we have a 15 by 24 column, uh, three inches from the edge to the centroid of the steel. Okay, um, and it has a total of 4.71 square inches, and uh, E is 1.2 inches and E is 9.6 inches. And so for those two cases, I wanna know the axial load capacity and the M will just be E times P. 
Let's do the one with the small e eccentricity first. We did this example previously. And uh, it has 1.3% steel. I mean, it's over the gross area. And uh, gamma is the distance between the steel divided by the overall distance. So the column is 24 inches wide, and there's 3 inches on both sides. So 24 minus 6 is 18. So gamma is a ratio of 18 to 24. Okay, so let me draw that. Okay, that's gamma, the ratio of 18 to 24. And that's 0.75. Okay, so what we need to do is find an interaction diagram with 0.75. But unfortunately, um, the, the ones I had were 0 0.6, 0 0.7, 0 0.8, and 0.9. So I rounded down uh, because when, when the gamma is smaller, everything gets uh, uh, smaller. It's conservative. It says it's less strong than it really is. So I used the 0.7 graph. And uh, E over H is 0 0.05. Um, and uh, these sloped lines here are uh, E over H. And so I found where E over H was 0.5, and I drew it in on a red line. Um, I, I eyeballed 1.3%. Um, let me show you that. This is, that's 1%. That's 2%. So I just went 0.3 between those two lines. And you can see right here. And then I, I went over. And um, <clears throat> I found E over H by, by doing 1 and 0 0.05. Okay, because uh, that's the slope. Uh, e over H is 1 over the slope. Okay, so anyway, uh, I got this point right there okay and uh, if you I magnified it and I read that point and it was uh, 0.84 we, we went over this last time and uh, um, that's what I got that to be and I look carefully at the axes and it says the axes is PN over AGF prime C and I just saw for PN and phi PN is 70 786 kips and E was 1.2 inches, which is one tenth of a foot, so 78.6 foot kips. Okay, so then we try 9.6 inches. Uh, it's the same chart, uh, it's just that E over H is 0.4 now, it's still 1.3 percent. And so there we go, uh, that's the 0.4 slope line, you can see that. And again, I interpolated 30% between the 1 and 2% lines. And I, I went over and I got this point right there. And I just read that off the graph at, as 0.41. And again, that's Pn over Ag F prime C. So I take 0.41 times F prime C times the area. I get 590 kips. Phi Pn is 384. And the moment is just E times P, and that comes out to 307 foot kips. Okay, that's how you would use an interaction diagram uh, to calculate P and M. But what we really want to do is use the interaction diagram to design. And I think I'm going to make that a separate video.